So I'm currently working on this iPhone 6S Plus, which is actually one of my phones. This has been driving nuts ever since I got this thing and repaired it the first time around. I've had no GPS. Never had GPS working, ever. So this phone, I think I did a video on it before, maybe a couple of them. I got this phone as a free phone. Someone gave it to me, said it doesn't work. It used to work, suddenly just died. What actually happened is this chassis actually had a whole bunch of loose screws in it. And screws fell out, shorted out the original logic ball, which is this one here, and killed it. So this board is fried, it's all burnt this connector up down here and stuff like that, shorted it out. Maybe recoverable, but I haven't even tried. Not going there. So I got a replacement logic ball from AliExpress, which is always a risky thing to do. It's kept iPhone, you know, it came with that, and it also came with the button, the home button as well, it was a matched pair. Home button works, fingerprint sensor works, so that's the reason I got it that way. But GPS has never worked. Yesterday I went through and replaced these two antennas up here. There's this antenna here, which is the original one, and this one here. Put new ones in, well, refurbished ones, you know, also from AliExpress. Swap those out, thinking maybe it's a bad antenna, which I think is actually this antenna here is the one which actually does the GPS, this one here. This goes to the frame up here, mounts up to the frame. That's a different cellular antenna or Wi-Fi or something, maybe Bluetooth. This one here is the one which I believe does the GPS. And anyway, I swapped them both, put it back together, thinking that'll probably solve the problem. No, still no GPS. So right, so I started looking a bit more in depth at this. And I pulled up the board layout diagram, circuit diagram, which I've got for this phone. They are available online if you search in the right places. Don't ask me for it, I'm not going to give it to you. Anyway, this is the board I got from AliExpress, and it, it works apart from GPS. The only thing I've got is GPS doesn't work. I looked at the board diagrams and I found GPS references inside the diagrams, found it where, which antenna it's supposed to be, which is this one here, is labelled as being GPS, which actually goes on to this connector here. This is a board upside down, normally it's this way up, right? So that's the back of the board. So a little bit there, and that's the connector for the GPS antenna. That's a GPS antenna socket, which also does two of the cellular bands as well. And I was looking really closely at this thinking that's interesting because you know it's, it's a really simple circuit. It goes from this thing here to that device there to this device here. And then this splits off through these coaxes, comes down the bottom here, goes to some other circuitry in the bottom. Cellular is working, but cellular is also a bit weak. It's not just GPS. So I had issues with cellular being weaker than my wife's phone. My wife's phone could pick up cellular sometimes better than my phone can. It's like, well, that's interesting. I'm thinking there's probably a connection here between the fact this has got two cellular bands on it as well as the GPS on that same antenna system. So I look more closely at the diagrams and there's a component here which passes through, goes into this little box here which is a three-way splitter, splits out two cellular bands and the GPS band. Then it goes to another component which is just down the siding, just see it there, little speck. Then it goes into this unit here which is an RF module which also handles the cellular and other stuff. I think well, the only real common point is between this antenna and that box there, right? So if the cellular is weak as well, then it's right there. And because I had the original board here, I noticed something. I was looking closely at this one, expecting it, and there's a slight difference. Let me get the microscope out, I'm gonna show you a bit better. So here it is underneath the microscope. This is the original ball which is burnt out. Yeah, actually I'll show you. So there's the socket down there, which has had a bit of a bad day. I mean, I might even be able to replace the socket and get this ball working again, but even then, because I was given this phone, I got told what the password was at the time, and they weren't even sure that it was the right one to unlock it and you know, get the Apple ID off it and stuff like that. So even if I could fix the phone logic ball properly, there's no guarantee I can actually get the thing unlocked and use it. So there's that RF socket there for the antenna, which looks absolutely fine. Come across, and there you've got this little component there. Don't know what that is. It could be in data. Doesn't look like a capacitor to me, it's probably in data. If I look over here, We've got this other one down the side of this chip. Okay, and there's the other one there. So those three components which are missing, they are I mean to be missing. Then we get the other ball. Do you notice something different here? So the issue here is that this component right there is missing. That's why I've got no GPS signal. And while the cellular is a bit weak, it's obviously lost some of the antennas. These things have multiple cellular antennas, you see. So that explains why I have trouble with that. I need to transplant that part from this board onto it. That's going to be fun. Look how small it is. <laughs> and there you go, there's a side by side comparison. There's a part that's supposed to be there, and there's that one. Yeah, so I've got to try and get this part off this board, put it on this one. Problem is, this stuff is tiny. Here's my sharp tweezers, right? These are tiny points. I put this by this part. Look how big they look. This part is absolutely tiny. 
So getting this part off here onto this one, not an easy job. I do obviously a lot of repair stuff. I don't normally work on things this small. A402 kind of size, A201 maybe. A402 is like the smallest size I'll do. I don't know what size this is, but it's tiny. It's probably like an 005 or something, I don't know. I'm used to doing bigger test equipment where you've got old through hole stuff, really. That's what I prefer to do. Far easier to work on. Hopefully I can get this part off without losing it and putting it over here. I'm gonna measure it before I take it off. I'm gonna find out what it is. I think it's an inductor. And if that's the case, then worst case, I could probably find another inductor off another board, which is similar, and swap it on if I do lose it, because I do have some other junk boards. And there's a good chance to use the same setup across other phones using the same parts. So it's quite likely I could grab the same inductor off another board if I do lose this one. So here is the connector for the antenna. That's that component which is missing, which is either a capacitor or an inductor, because it's Marta C, which is capacitor, but it's got inductor. It's also got this other part here, it's marked as no stuff, which is an inductor. Don't know, I could actually test the part on the donor board and see what happens. Comes through here to this U-Trip RF, which I believe is a splitter. So it comes in, splits off to GPS, cellular low, cellular mid. So these are obviously frequency bands for cellular and GPS. So maybe that's highest frequency, medium frequency, largest frequency. And it splits them off. It's using the same antenna for all three signal sets. Those three signals here then come over here. It's these three inputs here. So there's the GPS one coming in, it's one we're interested in. There's another component here, which is also another no stuff. Got another thing here, which is Martin's capacitor and inductor. Again, I think it probably is a capacitor. Don't know. I, I can probably measure it and find out. And then that comes across. Got another part here, which is another no stuff. And that's the GPS in onto the Uvox RF module. So this is obviously the radio receiver. And this is doing some work to split out the cellular which is the DRX cellular stuff. And then you've got the GPS output as well. And you've got some digital communication, serial communication up here as well. And there's a lot of thermal stuff going on. So I think this is probably maybe a transceiver too. I'm not sure since there's a lot of thermal pad going on. Maybe it's actually a radio transmitter as well because of the cellular stuff. So I could be doing that also. But yeah, that's the signal we're interested in. And if I look at the actual PCB, we zoom here. There's a connector. There's a connection that goes across. There's a component which is missing. All right, see 5007. That end goes to this part, which is then going into this U trip RF splitter. Get a bit closer, you can see the actual label loops. So that's the input, and those are the outputs. So GPS then goes out of this one into this part here, and that's just that other one which is not stuffed. Then we've got this part here which goes out, then it comes down into the UVOX RF chip just here, into that pin there. GPS LI in. So there's not much to go wrong here. You know, we've got the connector itself. We've got that part which we know is missing, which I think is probably all that's wrong. We've got this splitter here and then this chip and obviously that part there. So there's only a, a few bits which actually cause the GPS to not work because this also takes in cellular information from other antennas as well. You've got these other ones over here as well from coming other places because there's also these other connectors here. This one here comes in. We've got this one here as well. So it's all combined at this point. So that coax here, that goes down to this end of the board, down this way as well somewhere. So let's see what we figure out with this. I mean, is it capacitor? Is it inductor? Don't know. Let's measure it down the board before I take the part off, in case I lose it, and we'll go from there. So I was measuring this component using the Shannon tweezer, which they sent me a while ago to do review, because this is a tiny series amount of parts. This is the best tool for this job. I'm just trying to get a decent reading, because this is very small value as well. So I'm seeing 496 nano Henry. And if I close the tweezer together, I'm seeing 320. So it's about 140 now, Henry, I'm seeing on there. Here's the little tweezer I'm using just here. Perfect job for this. Well, the diagram said it's one nano, Henry. Anyway, what I know is that it's an inductor. So worst case, I can probably find another inductor somewhere else and actually replace it um, if I do lose this one, like I said. Or if you get really desperate, I could probably stick a wire in it. It might just work just fine. But it's best to stick to the original design. Probably there for filtering. So I'm going to try doing this and wish me luck. I'm going to need it. So I put a bit of flux on the board and this is going to end up being a massive mess because this is just the nature of it. This is a syringe. <laughs> so I'll put a bit of flux on there to help it and help hopefully stop it blowing away. All right, a bit of flux there. I'm also going to put some on the replacement well on the board it's going to go onto. What I actually do is, I think I'll touch up my soldering iron, just to help that one flow as well. Get that one ready with a bit of leaded solder, so it'll stick on a bit easier. 
because I don't want this to be too hard to do. Even that's going to be way too big for what I need to do, right? But it's what I've got, it's the smallest one I've got. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. A bit of leaded solder. The solder is also way too thick for what I'm doing. Let's start off with just by refreshing these terminals here. Get those freshened up. Okay. Now I've got to get this one off. Okay, so I'm not used to working on something like this. This isn't something I normally do. This is way smaller than I normally do. So I'm being careful with temperatures and airflow and stuff like that because I don't want to overdo it. I'm actually really surprised it's been this hard to get off. A bit more heat. 4 and 10. Another 5%. Airflow. Like I said, I don't want to blow the part away. There you go, it's off. Yay! Alright, next part. Look, we'll get it back on here without it disappearing. Okay, I think that's done. It's in place. That was a mission. So I ended up with 410 degrees and 25% airflow to get that to work. I had some marker pen on the board, which is going to make it look ugly. So hopefully I haven't done anything else. I've only just done that little bit and not disturbed any BGA under this thing and that sort of stuff. Hopefully not. We might just keep giving this a flush with alcohol, get it all nice and clean, get the flux off because I can't get in there that well with this. And there's the part in place. Looks like it's okay. I really hope this solves my GPS problem. Well, that's that done. It's all cleaned up, got the flux off it. I can put it back in again now. So I have to sort of flip this over this way and look at this and get this connector on. And then I can flip it over and get this other stuff and wiggle it around. It's a bit of a pain getting all these bits hooked over, but uh, it's not that bad. So I'll come back once I've got it back together and I'll let you know the outcome. So I've got the phone back together again. I've been and tested it outside. It seems to be working now. I'm not sure about how sensitive it is, but I'm actually getting a signal now at least and it's actually doing something. So I think it's probably okay. Inside the house it's struggling to get a signal, but that's not that surprising. I mean, it's got a metal roof and stuff like that, so it will be blocking it. So don't forget to click like and subscribe. Click subscribe right now, quick, before you forget. And I will let you know maybe in the comments below if it actually is fixed or not after a period of time. But it looks promising so far. See you later.